Welcome to episode 50 of the official podcast for Guardian One, a destiny group dedicated to the prosperity of Guardians everywhere. We broadcast live Thursdays at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 Eastern, right here on twitch.tv forward slash Guardian One Network. My name is Remy, and tonight I'm joined by Crimson Warlock. Hey guys, what's going on? Jez. Good morning. And Agrios. Greetings, Guardians. We are going to be talking about all things Destiny, but first, housekeeping. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening in on the podcast, however it is that you choose to listen. Be sure to follow Guardian One on Twitter at G1NET. Just a reminder, the Twitter account is the only instance where we use the number one. So, and again, that's G, the number one, N-E-T. In addition, be sure to check out the Guardian One website at guardian1.net. Also send us feedback to our email, feedback at guardian1.net. We also have a Bungie.net forums group that's currently at 122 members. If you want to join, just search for the group name Guardian One. Guardian One has its own clan, so if you want to join the Guardian One clan, just select the buttons that say set as PlayStation clan or set as Xbox clan. After you join the glue, uh, group, ugh. we utilize the forums for comments and feedback, so be sure to join the conversations going on there. Big thank you to all those currently in the Twitch chat. As Remy said at the top of the podcast, you can watch the show live at twitch.tv slash guardian1network. We broadcast every Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. can't catch the show live, you can always go to the Guardian 1 YouTube channel, youtube.com slash guardian1network. Guardian One is a proud member of the Guardian Radio Network, so be sure to check out the Guardian Radio Network website at theguardiansofdestiny.com. There you'll find all the different podcasts as part of the network, including the flagship podcast, Guardian Radio. They broadcast every Monday night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, on twitch.tv slash guardianradio. You can also follow their Twitter account at Guardians of D and their YouTube channel, youtube.com slash guardianradio. Other podcasts include Warlock School, TTL Party Chat, the DOD Podcast, and also the... What's it called? <laughs> oh, man, I'm like at a loss right now. <laughs> Audio Grimoire, Hollow River. Ah, uh, uh, the Hollow River. Is it? Oh, man. man How you know, old I... is that one? Because awesome. it's... Our Guardian 1 is actually at 189 numbers. <laughs> right? I've, I'm always so torn because I just I just picked a, a section of one of our previous podcasts and just recorded what sounded like, uh, you know, a good, a good uh, take on that. I just cut it out and put it in there and didn't realize until, uh, until we were playing it on the show that he mispronounces words and <laughs> I don't know. It's That's just so funny. Right, classic Hollow River, uh, and so like I don't know, I, I want him to I want him to re-record one of these without all the specifics, so then I can just use that one. Uh, I mean, there's outdated information in there. Uh, Dod is no longer the Dod podcast; it's the Aim Assist podcast. <laughs> so it's I don't know, funny times. Uh, sad, sad River can't be here today, but. Always, always love Hollow Rivers. <laughs> Hollow Rivers a I'd like to think that the old recording of Hollow River is subtle encouragement for him not to miss future shows. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what I'm thinking as well. It's, it's a, it's a bit ridiculous, but. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right, uh, public service announcement: If you are being harassed by someone online, report them to the provider of whatever service you are using block that person, and then forget about that person. Engaging them is exactly what they want you to do, so the most effective way of dealing with them is to simply add them to an ever-growing list of people who effectively do not exist. We at Guardian One explicitly do not condone any acts of harassment and will not tolerate those who wish to cause the distress of others. Reported, blocked, forgotten, moving on. Moving on indeed <laughs> uh, what do we got what do we got Agrios those people suck right right and we're not going to give them another second of air time yeah so anyway earlier this week we uh, we heard a little bit of uh, early news uh, a little bit of a leak happen sent the, had the made the community have uh, some questions uh, as to what the details were, because it looked like it might have been a GameStop exclusive, but Bungie responded early with the Soros Arsenal pre-order bonus. 
Well, that's what we got first in the news this week. Early access to the Soros Arsenal pack is available starting 9.15, and uh, it can be a- a- attained by pre-order of the digital and physical editions of Destiny the Taken King, um, and it- it's available from anywhere. It's not GameStop exclusive. Uh, it's subject to availability, though, and uh, it will be available to all players outside the United States. It includes the pre-order of the $40 and the $60 editions, not just the collector's edition. And if you've already pre-ordered a qualifying edition, pre-ordered a qualifying edition, you're already included. So you don't have to do anything additional to get your Soros Arsenal pack. Awesome. Do we know what that comes with? Uh... It appears it comes with, uh, in, in the image, uh, which I don't have handy right now, it, it appears it comes with, uh, I, I think, a shader, it looks like, or, uh, I know yeah. they have the, it comes with a shader, and then what appears to be, like, something like what you had access to the Vanguard Armory pack with the launch of the game, something along those lines, but for a Soros array of weapons. Does that also include those hacky sack weapons? Because it... Because it looks like in the picture that they're showing some hack a weapons. Do you know anything about that, Agrios? No, I don't. I mean, it's called the Soros Arsenal Pack, and yeah. I mean, I looked at the picture right when it leaked, but uh, I, I didn't notice the weapons from the other designers offhand. Interesting. When you pre-order it digitally, it calls it the Soros slash Hack a Pack. That's what I'm yeah, I've heard reports of that, people having that on their digital pre-order menu. I know Fuzzle, uh, he's on the European PSN over there. Uh, he said that it showed up on his list of downloads as the Soros Hockey Pack. So, And it does seem that the, the Hakka weapons are Vanguard branded. Like, they have the Vanguard colors and like they're like the yellow and the blue and the white. Like the Vanguard logo. Right. So it seems like this is the next level of the Vanguard weapons as well. So it might be it might be available for everyone as well. Interesting. So, That's what I was I thinking. Mean, we mentioned this before. I mean, being that the Hanke seem to have the Vanguard branding, I mean, do you think are all okay, are all the new weapons going forth going to belong to one of these foundries, or are we still going to see like, uh, of the normal legendaries, are we still going to see unbranded normal legendaries, so to speak? Like, will the legendaries coming from the factions, will they be branded or unbranded? Or how do you think that'll work? Well, I'm me, not I, sure. With, they, with what they've talked about, uh, having the biggest arsenal, even um, from the vanilla launch of the game, it sounds like we're going to get um, three more sets of weapons um, like three three new sets of weapons on top of the factions we already have and the Vanguard. I you know what I would really like to see <clears throat> separate sections like that. I would really like to see you know as a, a what the normal one looks like, and then you know this is what Hake did. This is what Soros did. You know I think that I think that that would be really cool. Um, but but then again, we might just. I mean, this we've already seen this with, um, you know, with the factions that are in the game as it stands. Like like some of those models are just slightly altered versions. Same thing with the armor. You know, each of them is roughly the same. But like the crucible armor looks different than the vanguard armor. But it's it's all in the same. It looks like it was all made by the same person. And those and then once they got a hold of this generic shell, the different factions, you know, made their own take on it. Uh, I would I would definitely be interested in seeing some just straight-up Vanguard weaponry. Uh, I love the symbol. I love the black and the orange. I think it looks great. Uh, I I want it to mean more that I'm putting my, um, my time and effort into pushing Vanguard forward. You know, I, I really like the generic kind of a forces of the city thing. Like, I want to, I want to push that more on one or more of my characters. Um, what What do you think, Jez? Well, I remember back when they revealed the foundries. Uh, well, they showed off the foundries in the weekly update. They made mention that we would get 
uh, other sets, as in class sets of items, and then the the vendor items that we have currently, but they seem to be completely separate from the foundries, yet we've seen Hakai Vanguard stuff, so I'm not really sure how they're doing it, but if we were to, like, ascribe a certain foundry for the the vendor gear because they're meant to be like this mass-produced arsenal it seems like they would most likely be hockey anyways now do you th- feel like that's uh do you feel like that's because uh i heard previously that the um that all the planes uh were from dead orbit and that never made any sense to me. And now there's this little symbol on the end of many of those planes. Uh, but do you think that has anything to do with that? And, Jez, do you know if that is accurate? I've actually never heard that. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I, I know they have very specific dead orbit planes. Like they added the vendor ones in uh, House of Wolves. But Wait, if you... If you look in the early lore, I think I think it says it's one of the grimoire cards that the Deb- dead orbit maintains the hangar area in in the mm-hmm. the tower. And uh, if you look on the ships, like especially in like the early concept art, it's even more clear. But if you look on the, the the dorsal fin of a lot of the the regular like blue ships and things that you find, uh, it appears they have the dead orbit logo on the dorsal fin. I guess I never looked that closely on my loading screen ship. You know, I, I looked, and I didn't agree, uh, but that doesn't mean I'm right. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm putting up some some images right now. So it says this collector's edition digital content. It shows three class-specific emotes, three armor shaders, three exotic class items with continuous XP bonuses. And then it says the city has provided you with a cache of items to aid you on your adventure early access weapon pack. And it shows the, the hacky styled weapons. And I'm saying this just because these are the same models, like, like it's squared off. And uh, where was this picture taken? Just curious. I I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just know access doesn't have three S's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that could be that could be. That a glared problem. out on me. Uh, I'll take a look. <laughs> well, when I saw it, I I saw the white and orange. I just thought those were like Vanguard weapons again. Well, totally. I yeah. mean, if you if you look at it, it it does have this V here. It does have this V here. Yeah, um, they are hockey weapons, but but with Vanguard colors. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it. I think it's cool that we are just getting another taste of, of weapons. You know, we've seen weapons come and go, and we've seen you know styles come and go, and you know to think that this is where the tower is getting their weapons to push out. You know, this time it was Hake. You know, they wanted to go with it. This is, you know, accessible. These weapons are familiar. Um, I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it's really cool, but it's really here neither here nor there, and we won't know until everything uh, comes out. So moving on. Well, my my uh, real quick, my other thought that yeah. these are our new vendors on top of everything that we already have is just you know the the taking king to me is is shouting, you know we don't want every guardian to look the exact same, and we don't want your weapons to be the exact same and. So this to me is just, I don't want to say it's its um, like flooding the, the game with weapons, but I think they're trying to get enough weapons out there to make you look more unique as a guardian. Yeah, I'll go along with that. Speaking of, look at this. I just noticed this. It shows this Titan class item right here. It's got the crest that shows up on um, the... Um, Yellowhorn, and also, is it the Crest of the Alpha Loopy? Um, and then there's okay. just a hammer sitting on his on his hip. There's just that, that glowing, flaming hammer sitting on his hip. That is awesome. I want that. This whole thing looks great. I think that this armor looks super cool. Uh, you know, I don't... I don't know. This Warlock looks cool, I guess. This Hunter looks cool, I guess. But look at this. This Titan looks amazing. I can't wait to buy this content. Would buy it right now. Look, there's a hammer on his hip. 
that is awesome. That is really awesome. Uh, what do you guys? So think? It, it appears the source pack also comes like the, these are the collector's edition bonuses that you see here at the top. And then the bottom's the, the, the Soros pack. But the Soros pack itself also comes with a shader and an emblem. Um, I linked in chat, you can see there's another link there of the GameStop ad, actually, which shows that shader. And, uh, yeah, those, right. Let me see what I can see. Um, well, the one you had up also shows it. So that works, too. I just saw you flip to the other one that showed the emblem. I am not getting the chats for some reason. How strange. That's okay. That that one you had up is a different picture than the one I linked you, but but it shows it as well. You you flip to it right before it, it's caught up on my screen right before you uh right before you uh, took it down there. But uh yeah, so I, I mean it's interesting. I, I my concern is that they're giving us all these things. They're, we're getting what, four new shaders now? What, uh, two emblems, or five new shaders, two emblems, a sparrow, the, 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 the Soros pack that comes with it. I already don't have any room in my vault. So I'm right, gonna have what are you even going to do? All of these things, plus all the things I'm going to find as I'm playing. Well, remember that these things are usually found at a vendor. Compared to, compared to like most things that you have to find in the wild, you'll probably be able to rebuy this if you get rid of it. True. You'll probably be able to buy it if you get rid of it. Yeah, like if you buy it, use it, and then you delete it for space reasons, it'll always be at that vendor for you to just rebuy. Oh, I see what you're saying. That seems ridiculous. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, awesome. Moving on? Moving on. Moving on. So uh, <clears throat> they also dropped some new, some more weapon models on us, similar to the images we got in last week's weekly update. We got to see uh, new renders of uh, the Hake and Soros weaponry, and uh, there were links to uh, many of Bungie's art station portfolios provided where you can see much more content uh, that they've done for outside Destiny and, and, and for Destiny. So those, if you're into checking out... Uh, a lot of the visuals, I encourage you to check out all those links. There's some cool stuff there. Excellent. The Dames of Destiny took on a bungee bounty on Xbox One this week. It's the first bungee bounty that we had in a, a long time since the, the Guardian Radio bounty back in March. Uh, I wasn't able to, to tune in for that. Were, were any of you guys able to, to catch that? Nope, nope, that was couldn't. right in the middle of my taking care of some kids. <laughs> I was too busy. Couldn't do it at work this week. Did, uh, now, did any, anyone Xbox get one. the... Uh, what's that? Instead of PlayStation 4. So, I, so the fact that I couldn't participate, I'm sure, had no bearing on whether I could be there or not. <laughs> but uh, but no, I would have been there had I could have been. It they, they was about time they showed the Xbox community some love. Uh, River's not here to defend them, so I guess I'll, I'll take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> i seen some comments like, why no love for PlayStation? And River's, oh, River's, like, River's like, come on. I saw yeah, that too. Yeah, That's River kind of exploded on that guy, I feel. <laughs> I, I, wonder if, I wonder if that was supposed to be sarcasm and it was just missing the sarcasm tag. <laughs> I hope so, man. I hope so. We pretty uh, bad if it was sarcasm. I love I love these bungee bounties because they give the they give the community a chance to get something special, like this this emblem. I don't particularly like just because the background is so light and because Bungie doesn't believe in drop shadows. Uh, I'm just simply not interested in any of the. Uh, in any of the emblems that have super light backgrounds, I really need to. I really want to be able to display my name and my group, you know, prominently. Like some of these are, are so super light, it makes them very difficult to read. And and a simple drop shadow uh, would take care of this, you know. Probably probably really spice up all of them if you think about it. But the uh, the fact that this is 
this is the only way that you can get this and it's so interactive you know the in the beginning Bungie was talking about there would be visitors to the tower and what I thought they meant by there would be visitors to the tower is that there would be like special community people like let's say for instance Datto you know Datto was going to be in the tower and if you got to go see him then he could walk up to you and invite you out for a raid or a a strike or something like I thought that it was going to be more interactive like that and perhaps that would be a way that you got these I just happened to log in and I saw this person like it's gonna happen to somebody somebody out there sees Datto all the time somebody out there lives in his area and see him coming and going all the time Uh, and it would be cool for that to be the case Uh, and this is a you know, this is just one example of of how they're doing that. Uh, I've never seen I've never seen anybody. <laughs> I don't have this. I don't have this emblem. Uh, does anybody here have this emblem? Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something that I would wish they did with this emblem, or at least something like it. Uh, they did. Like you have to be very specifically either in a near a location that. Uh, one of the the host is at makes it easier for you to get in, so it's very location based, and it's sort of uh, skill based matchmaking. But it would have been nice if they made it so that, like, if you were wearing this emblem and someone beat you, they got the emblem. Like, as it, it spread virally. Oh yeah, oh that would they be cool. they had a um... yeah they had that for the original one. Yeah. Uh, for was... Halo, the original one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a guy in the chat, Erico1994, says, I really wish I had the money for DLC because I feel like I'm missing out. Uh, and, and I will tell you, Erico, that if you play Destiny still... Uh, and you've you've put any kind of time in it, you know. And I will I will put this: if you're running more than one character, if you're running more than one character, then it's it's definitely worth it to pick it up. You know, I one of the things that Bungie really did badly, or really shot themselves in the foot with, was by how easy they made everything look. Like like when I go and play any game other than Destiny, I think to myself this game is crap compared to Destiny because of the way it feels and the way it looks on screen. Like, Bungie did such an amazing job with making everything seem right that that's just the way it should be. And I agree that that's just the way it should be, but they just made it look too easy. Uh, and so this is something similar. You know, the the expansions are really awesome. The expansions are really awesome, and I... I haven't had a chance to play without the expansions, but I'm glad that I haven't had a chance to play without the expansions because because it's the new gear, because it's what's going on. Uh, and if you have not if you have not finished the the main campaign and you're running only wanting run uh, running one character, you know it's it's not something that you necessarily need. You know, like I I don't know what it looks like without the DLCs, but there's still a ton of stuff to do. There's still a ton of vanilla destiny content that i do because it's because it's still worth it uh so yeah i just wanted to throw that out there thanks for uh, yeah, thanks for coming out to the show about <laughs> providing like a lot of stuff for the people who aren't picking up the dlcs compared to other games dlcs like you usually don't see so much content just released in the wild and i guess that's kind of part of the evolving world that destiny has and I, I get the impression, and I really hope that with the Taken King, it, it's going to bring a significant amount of change to the world. Like I, 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 they've already kind of hinted at that. You know, you were there during your year one. You know, if you weren't there during year one, there's things that you're just never going to experience. They started with things like the Blades of Crota, and the the pack of wolves are going to change clearly, and things like that. But I, I hope it goes a lot further than that with Taken King. I hope something. I hope something. Is, you're absolutely right. Uh, I hope something takes the place of the the wolves because it's really added an element to Destiny that I really, really wanted from the beginning, which was that if you're not a high enough level to deal with those wolves, then you basically either have to 
you have to move around them and not be seen or you're going to die a lot. You know, like I, I really enjoy helping out the level five people who try and take on these creatures that have to be the reddest of red question marks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, right. but, but I, well, I really want to see hazards. I really want to see hazards. Like, could you imagine if there was just Gorgons, um, you know, in, in the area where you, you had to, you had to avoid them unless you had a bunch of other people and you were going to kill them before it killed you. Like, I think that that would be cool. You know? So Remy, I think you might want to wait until we start talking about this week's weekly update. I was just going to say, I think you're going to get your I see the thing with the wolves in this expansion is that they're really stuck in keeping those wolves out there because the brief has bounties for them. They would either have to scrap all the bounties and the queen's reputation, and then they could remove them, or they have to leave them in so new people can get to it. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Or what if it changes? You know, what if uh, the queen says to us, all right, we took care of those fools. Now it's time to sit down some other people. You know, like what if that was just a specific thing that the, the queen the queen's... Uh, area brings to you is this constantly changing thing because yeah there's still that you know kill so many blades you know on uh, on earth and you can only do that now by going into that mission mm -hmm. uh, so it's so yeah it'll be interesting to see what they do with that well that or they add like an alternate patrol type which is like the house of wolves Patrol. House of Wolves Patrol. That would be awesome. Maybe that should also be the hardcore patrol. You know, like <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should just uh, get to the get to the update. Well, what else do you got in between then and you now, Agrios? Oh, well, I'm going right to the up update right now. We're heading for the dreadnought. Excellent. All right. So uh, they brought in senior artist Andrew Hopps to lead us in to the Dreadnought this week. Uh, he says, It was important to us that you would feel the scale as you moved through the halls of the Dreadnought. Never sure about what to expect as large spaces condensed into claustrophobic tunnels before revealing entirely new areas of the ship. A sense of wonder about the unknown is what drove a lot of the spatial design. It was incredibly fun... It was, it was an incredibly fun challenge to find the right balance between a mysterious tomb ship and the flagship for the Taken fleet. To capture the idea of this unfathomable threat, a, mon a monstrous spaceship captained by the Taken King, yet uh, with vast caverns and unknown passages. Uh, I can't wait for players to explore and discover all of its secrets. Uh, Lead lighting artist Mike Poe says that one of the biggest challenges they faced in was making the Dreadnought feel unsettling and uninviting while still making it a place people would want to visit and spend a lot of time exploring. And uh, staff artist Mark Goldsworthy said that the opportunity to create the vista from inside Saturn's rings was a dream come true. Creating the illusion that the players within the ring plane with all that ice visible, with a huge sense of depth, was really a really fun challenge. So uh, I just picked out two of the quotes. There's a couple others there, along with a, a bunch of concept art for us to check out. Uh, I'm putting it, it up on the stream now. Is this what you want to hear? Is this what you want to, to, to hear about the Dreadnought? Does this excite you? <clears throat> okay, I'll start, as I usually do. <laughs> uh, so my least played area in Destiny is the moon because it creeps me out because it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it is not inviting. You know, there's, there's many, uh, many things that wish to do me harm and, and they are super alien. They are very, uh, very unknown to me. Cabal, uh, I love fighting Cabal, Fallen, same, um, you know, so it's. Vex, Vex, I also uh, enjoy destroying. Like I don't, I don't really get a sense of of hatred from the Vex. Like it's it's more cold and calculated. Like like they're just going to remove me because I'm not one of them. I can get on board with that, you know. But like I feel like these, I feel like the the hive 
are really are really creepy and I don't want to I don't want to spend any more time doing what they're doing than than already and I think that the fact that the taken are represented by each of the races is going to ease me into the exploration of this clearly hive ship and world you know I, I feel like it's I feel like I'm not going to be just creeped out by a bunch of I don't know. They're creepy. The Hive are really creepy. Uh, Jez, what do you think about this? Oh, I just want to point out first that the the concept art that you have up currently shows that there's not just Hive in that ship. Like, not just Hive structures, I mean. Because there's a... I think that's a... Fallen ship? I don't know. Fallen or Cabal. It's a little bit weird. Oh, the um, one's flying up to it? Yeah, that one that you're viewing it right now. Um, the, uh... But that definitely overall... looks like a ball standing there, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and another point I wanted to make is, have you guys ever seen the image of what it would look like if there was rings on Earth? No. It's, it's, it's visually amazing, and I kind of wish there was rings, but it would throw all kinds of tides off. Um... But yeah, basically, this place is going to look beautiful and ugly at the same time, and that's great. So the Cabal ship that you see in this Dreadnought, uh, I I studied the hell out of some original, some of the original um, works. Before the game came out, there was a video released that showed a Cabal ship in a uh, in a place that looked very hive. Uh, and it occurs to me now that that's what this is. Like, it looked like a crash-landed Cabal ship. Uh, and I was going to pull it up before the show, but then XSplit decided to crap on my times. Like, like we started almost 40 minutes late, maybe even later than that, for this podcast. Because I had to go in and, and finally update Twitch, or uh, XSplit. I didn't want to have to X, uh, update XSplit. Had to update XSplit. And now everything is out of whack because they have a bunch of new options. Um... But yeah, so I, I didn't have a chance to pull it up. But if you and look through, I think it's even Pathways Out of Darkness. Pathways, mm. it, one of those has concept art that shows a giant cabal ship inside a structure that looks very hive. Uh, and I'm thinking that that's where, that's where they, were, they took this. Uh, it looks like the only way in is through this giant hole that the cabal ship made. Is that what you're I talking was about? Say, so do you think this is our entrance point for the Dreadnought? Yeah, I would say that it's at least one of many. It's probably it would the- make sense. This might be like, you know how they're talking about that story mission where the Cabal are running away. This might be the distress ship and it gets pulled in or something. Oh, I do I notice that that's, about that that's a little <laughs> knight. That thing that's in front of the ship is a knight. When you zoomed in on it, I could see yeah. the little features. Totally. Little baby knight. Totally. A little baby knight. Uh, but, but this one, this one right here is definitely, this is definitely Cabal right here. I mean, uh, we could wait 40 seconds for you to be able to <laughs> see it on the screen. <laughs> well, it's, it's shorter than that now. But yeah, <laughs> this is going to be an interesting expansion. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Crimson Warlock? So, when I first uh, saw this concept art, I was like, that thing looks like a Star Destroyer meet alien." Ooh, I like that. I'm yeah, excited for it. Like the the whole dreadnought to me just feels has has the a, a Star Wars esque feel, I guess, of assaulting a star a star destroyer, and um, that's that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about the loot, and I really hope that we get to see loot pinatas when we find these chests that are hard to get to or that are behind like a mini boss kind of a thing. I I really hope that we get to see loot pinatas like we saw in a particular Vidoc um, before launch. I really uh, hope that makes it in because I think that'd be cool to just see Ingrams and Glitter hit the floor and then you get all your prizes. Uh, for those that don't know, example given me, what is a loot pinata? Um, well, you, a loot pinata, if, if uh, anyone's played like Diablo 3 or or any other kind of hack and slash dungeon crawler, 
a lot of times when you kill a, a hard monster or a boss, then they just they they die in all the the currency gold what whatever it is and um, the cool items that the boss has usually just drops on the floor and so they the call bo- Borderlands the uses the loot pinata effect a lot when they oh, do okay. stuff. Yeah, I definitely want a loot pinata as well. That sounds pretty excellent. <laughs> In case it ever comes up, the other definition of a loot pinata is a very easy boss that gives you loot. That's kind of what I was thinking that he was saying, but I'm glad that we had a chance to straighten that out. <laughs> that I'd like to point out while we're viewing this concept art is to like take note of some of the things they provide in the pictures for scale. I mean, they have uh, like hive tomb ships that you can see, and we know how big a hive tomb ship is standing next to it. And these things are specks in some of these corridors on these images. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we know how big these type this type of walkway is. Yeah. Yeah, this is all really cool. I am I am insanely excited for the uh, for this update. I'm exa- I'm insanely excited about um, the secrets. Uh, I am insanely excited about the fact that I think that there's still more to find in the Vault of Glass. Uh, maybe that we won't be able to even get to for some time. You know, it just I feel like. I feel like you know what they're going to be doing here is taking those things to the next level. You know, like there's there was the um, that video that shows the guy jumping out to nothing, and and having that um, and having a, a a bridge show up in front of you. There's going to be a lot of exploration like that, uh, and I think that that's what I'm going to find most exciting is is not knowing what's going to work what you know and then in addition to that i'm really excited about finding out from from people you know look going to the uh going to the internet and finding out what people think you know like secrets that people have found you know one uh-huh. advantage to this type of setup it being like enclosed in a ship instead of being out of control is that they don't have to worry so much about uh the invisible walls. Yes. You put up a real wall. Yeah, I like that too. So it's going to help exploration as well. Because you're going to know much better that you can go there. Man, that's There's a really good point. kill floors, but yeah. I can't I, wait to see the jumping puzzles then. Like, this, this place will probably just be riddled with jumping puzzles. Absolutely. I'm way excited about the jumping puzzles. Those are Those are some of my favorite things in Destiny, hands down. Like, uh, the uh, the missions for the House of Wolves, uh, doing those jumping puzzles across to the way, like like I want ones that are going to test us even more than that. Those all seem like tiddlywinks, really, uh, but super fun tiddlywinks, not lame tiddlywinks. <laughs> uh, Agrios, what do you think about this? What do you think about this um, this the new setting and everything that's coming with it? Uh, I'm excited about it. I like exploring. I was uh, a little underwhelmed by the amount of exploring exploring in the world environment uh, in the original Destiny launch. I was... Uh, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, Destiny still a great game and all that and stuff, but it was a bit of what I had anticipated before launch and hoped Destiny to be. And it, it wasn't exactly the game I had hoped it would be, although it's a great game. I, I a big fan of like the Fallout series and I like Skyrim and stuff. And uh, Destiny just doesn't really have exploration on par with that. And I don't expect this to be anything like those games, but it seems to me that they're really embracing um giving the people like me that maybe were a little underwhelmed with Destiny like that a bigger playground with this expansion. Right, and and don't be afraid to uh, tell it like it is, because you know what? I was I was basically furious with the amount of with the amount of exploring that was available in Destiny. I felt like there were areas that I could obviously get to and I was just being I was just being kept from them. Like <clears throat> the, the the divide was really 
where it where it first hit me that oh man this is this is much less of the game that I was hoping for. And and that is not to say that I don't absolutely love Destiny. That's not to say that I don't plan on spending the next 10 years thoroughly, thoroughly engaged with it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I wanted to jump out to that uh, fin in uh, Moth Yards. Uh, and somebody actually sent me a video showing me that they made it out to that fin, but it wasn't you know, you had to go a special way. It wasn't just the way that I was going to take it, which was straight out the back of that plane. Like, there's just so many times where I was slapped on the hand for trying to explore. And and you know what really frustrates me is I just did a bounty for a silent thing in Forgotten Shores. And I, or no, not Forgotten Shores. It was the Grottoes. It said the Grottoes. And so I, I searched all through the Grottoes for this silent fang. Didn't find it. Didn't find it. Didn't find it. Uh, and then I just kept searching. You know, th- it, this says this is here. I'm going to find it somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> and so finally I found it next to this really sweet, um, it looks like another one of those entrances to uh, the War Mind. You know, that mm-hmm. giant black diamond. Yep. You know what I'm talking about, Agrios. This was yep, cool. Yep. And it was a cool little area to explore. And if I hadn't been so consistently told no by soft kill zones and by invisible walls, uh, I definitely would have found that. You know, I, I feel like I'm not I'm not supposed to explore. Uh, and I'm hoping that you guys are totally right about the fact that this dreadnought is going to represent, like, okay, here's an actual physical wall, uh, and here. You know, like, like, can I get through this is going to be, it's, it's not going to be as, as frustrating versus real life. You know, what's happening, <clears throat> what's happening in real life instead of the soft kill zones, which I'm sure there will still be some. Um, but yeah. you know, it'd be really uh, annoying slash awesome is if like you go along and like, huh, this wall looks a little different color and you like punch it or something in it folds away and there's a hidden path totally totally i i'm way looking forward to that i way want my ghost to uh, to open up doors like they do on the moon you know like like i don't know i'm I, but again i'm being cautious because i i get excited about these things and then i get my hopes way up um <laughs> you know, I have to gonna be limited by last gen so <laughs> I, We're not going to be doing anything with... except for what can also be accomplished on last gen. It'll just look a little prettier. Well, with the uh, it being interior, is going to be much better for last gen too. Because I won't have to okay, paint I've the backdrop all the time. Sharks right. says, "I'm so sick of hearing that as a reason, though." <laughs> and man, I can't even imagine what it's like in in Bungie. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, we can't do that. <laughs> now I'm going a little off the rails, but I wonder if the ghost opening up the doors is a bug, or if it's a hint. <clears throat> uh, you know what? I I I could see it being. One hundred percent one and one hundred percent the other. Why the hell not? You know, it could be a bug. I hope it's a hint, uh, but it could be a bug. I don't know why it wouldn't open up any other doors, though. It's odd bug. If it's it not a bug. a bug. I say it's an odd bug if it is a bug. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I mean, they even make jokes about it, like if you are on the Omnigal strike. And you're running from after you kill that fallen captain that's a checkpoint. And you're running over to open that garage door that takes you to Omnigal. If you get to that garage door control and activate it before Eris is done talking, uh, she says an extra line with a joke about ghosts being there to open doors for you. Yeah, I know, but that could just mean like uh, when you get to that one place where it's like, oh... Someone sealed this from the other side. Looks like they didn't want anyone getting in. He opens that door. Like this is this is typically True, what the ghost does. True, but if we're going tinfoil hat on our ghost opening doors, you know. Well, yeah, take the tinfoil hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, Erico responds. I have a warlock, titan, and hunter, and they are all level twenty-four. This, uh, my friend, means that you do not need to yet purchase the. Um, the expansions. If all of your characters are level twenty-four right now, then then you've still got 
plenty of room to grow within Destiny before you you should feel like you have to um, upgrade. I mean, you know, that's not to say that it's it's not it wouldn't be awesome to have those things because it does make it it does make it slightly easier uh, for you to to get these things because then they just start handing them to you. Um, what, what do you uh, do? You guys know uh, if you don't have the expansions, can you get the armor from like the Vanguard? Yes, you. The the vendors all sell the same thing to everybody. Okay, and what about drops? Like, let's say you know you the don't. The only have... thing that changes is what areas you get to access, and which uh, events you can participate in. Such as, like, I think you had to get. I think you had to get House of Wolves to participate in Trials of Osiris, for instance. Okay, because you needed access to the to the reef, and without that, no, you could get access to the reef without House of Wolves. Okay, just just Trials is just considered House of Wolves new content, so you don't have yeah. access to that event, that area, that that square in the Crucible. When you pull up your Crucible menu, will if you go to click on it, it'll say you need to purchase House of Wolves DLC. That's an area. So right. it only prevents you from areas. Items and everything are not affected by the DLC. If you still get access to all the items, so it's so just an area. So you can still get all of the armor. You can still get all of the, but it right. just as a as a drop specifically. Now, if you don't have House of Wolves, you can't run level twenty eight Prison of Elders or the new Dragon Strike playlist. So, like sources of getting the new items may not be available to you. Like if you don't have the House of Wolves DLC. You won't be able to obtain Elder Cyphers to get the Queen's Breakers, the Queen's Breaker bow, and the uh, Lord Got of the Shotgun, and things oh, like that. Oh man, it just so, makes. So you can get all the items. Doesn't mean you'll be able to get to all the items. Got it. Got it. It all makes so much more sense now, as that is the reason why where you get exotics from. That's very interesting, and thank you for that. Now, in the past DLC. <clears throat> Like for the for the dark below, for instance, you could still score uh, a a like you can still go to Zer and buy the the new Zer weapons. So if he was selling something, well, the dark below they didn't sell dark below weapons actually, right? Yeah, because they're only exclusives, right? No land there beyond. Yeah, what about no land beyond? <laughs> there was a yeah, lot of beyond. yeah. Okay, I was trying to think of one, but I was drawing a blank. So, for instance, this... if Zerk sells No Land Beyond, you can still buy No Land Beyond if you don't have the DLC. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, not exclusive ones because there was like I besides the armor, there was No yeah. Land Beyond, Dragon's Breath. Right. It's just they've been there for so long now; they're just blending yeah. in vanilla ones to me. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> we should have somebody who uh, who doesn't have the expansions come on the show <laughs> and see what they have to say. Uh, moving on. All right, you move it on. So uh, let's get into some of the details of the uh, of the dreadnought here, a as well as being the focal point for the story uh, campaign in the Taken King. The dreadnought will be also be the centerpiece of the Taken War, a progression that extends well beyond the traditional storyline. So that's an interesting statement there. Read, read that again. The as well as being a focal point for the story campaign in The Taken King, the Dreadnought will also be a centerpiece of the Taken War, a progression that extends well beyond the traditional storyline. Okay, that that sentence right there makes me really excited about uh, The Taken King, uh, and it, it, it makes me excited in the way that we've seen kind of the Crucible um, branch out. We've seen, you know, um, PVE branch out, you know, with w with Trials of Osiris and Prison of Elders. Uh, I like the way that, that that sentence is worded. That makes me excited. So so what does your tinfoil hat wearing self tell you about that, Agrios? Like if you if um, you were going nuts with this and you were like, oh, they're adding potatoes into the game. Like like what what does that mean to you? Well, it, I mean, it, it's a very, int very, very interesting worded sentence. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of different ways you could take that. A progression that extends well beyond the traditional storyline. Yeah. I mean, is I'm hoping that, it, I mean, this just means a lot more story for one. I'm hoping that 
when we go through those whatever dozen story missions they add for it or whatever and we do that day one or two we'll get through with one of our characters the whole way through all of them right off the bat i'm hoping our story doesn't end there i'm hoping that although we we get to the big baddie there's unanswered questions that you need to seek out specific hidden quests or hidden bounties on patrol or in the tower or the new tower or wherever it is to, to uncover more story. I, I want them to work like grimoire cards in as rewards for tracking down like uh, some, some sleuthing, if you will. Yeah. Uh, like that. And involve that in the game and not just exterior stuff, you know? That would be really cool. That would be really cool. I like that a lot. Uh, what about you, Crimson Warlock? Does, does this sentence speak to you, or should we move it along before you're interested in talking about it? <laughs> I don't know. This, this definitely interests me. Um, and the reason why it interests me is when I first read this, um, to me, this is uh, our first kind of look at what could be um, episodic content. Um, and I'm going to say that uh, so the dark below was was our hive episode one, and then this or um, oryx and the taking king is hide episode two. Um, and the fact that uh, this taken war, you know, it it might might play in the background of uh, you know year two. We might have updates to the taken war in the next. Uh, DLCs that come after the Taken King, but we won't see any like large progression until we hit Hive Episode Three DLC. And uh, the way I see it is, uh, you know, we'll we will see more Fallen um, things relate to what we did in the House of Wolves, and so it's it, it's kind of like uh, this episodes we'll, we'll see when they come out, but they'll they'll connect to the last time we really dealt with that alien ring. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, Jez? Donate your spirit bloom for the war effort. <laughs> <laughs> it, it honestly, to me, it seems more like a, like a, like, like an actual war effort, like donating your resources to progress a bar or something. Like, just as kind of like a secondary thing to the entire story. And knowing Luke's history in World of Warcraft, I wouldn't be so surprised if we bang a gong and get a scarab mount. Well, yeah, I'd be surprised to get <laughs> scarab mounts. But yeah, like that type of server type event is something that's kind of the grand scale that people want. And I'm sure they're listening, so they might be trying something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. I'm excited about <clears throat> being part of year one. I'm excited about having gone through these things. You know what's crazy, though, is I swear I haven't played Destiny in, like, weeks. Like, two weeks. It's going on, like, two weeks. I, I The most I've done is gone on and get gotten my Gorgon chests. And also, <laughs> I did one Nightfall last week because when I hopped on... Uh, two of the guys uh, <clears throat> in Guardian 1 were running one, and I just jumped in, and and then I realized I didn't have my bounty <laughs> from Eris. So I jumped out, and I grabbed it, and then I thought, you know what? If they're done by that time, then it's cool. If not, and then I jumped back in, and they were just killing the person. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's all I've done. <clears throat> I just... I've. And it's crazy. Like I feel like a lot of the negativity aimed at destiny rotates around a person's lack of ability to play and or a lack of a person's ability to find a group to play with uh, because I've said before on the show playing the PlayStation version of destiny is a much different experience than playing the Xbox version of destiny just because there's so many people on PlayStation who are ready to play right now. They're playing right now. Uh, and it's much lonelier on Xbox. You know, I don't, I don't see people playing all the time. So when I do hop on and let's say I see Agrios playing destiny, I know I can hop in with him and we can go take care of business. 
Uh, and so <clears throat> I just I just haven't had time. Like my time has been so tied up recently, and I keep waiting for this. I keep waiting for this wall to break down where I will begin to have actual time to dedicate to playing Destiny because there's still tons of stuff I want to do. I still need the Mythoclast. I still want a Fate Breaker. Like, these are things that I could do right now if I had a couple hours in front of me. <clears throat> you know? LFGs are, are drying out because people are getting these things and then they're going on to play other games, which is cool. I totally understand. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I, I don't know. I forgot where we're going with that. What were we talking about, Agrios? <laughs> We were just talking about things to do in, uh... What was that? It was that war thing that... Ah, yes. The, uh, the... It's taken war. Yeah, looking forward to doing exciting things in Destiny is what got us up to where you were. Ah, yes. I'm in the same area. I mean, I've been playing Elder Scrolls Online a lot. I've been going into Destiny and getting my my Nightfalls done, and I've been letting my friends know, hey, if you have other things you really want to get done for a reason, let me know. I'll jump in and do them with you. I'm not opposed to playing, but... I, I just, I you know, I, I've become a little bit bored. I, I have almost everything, and uh, my chances to get the things that I still desire in the game are few and mean, except for running dragon strikes over and over and over again. And uh, I exhaust my opportunities to get those things I need very quickly in a week. So I go take my opportunities to get those I can, and you know, move on to playing Elder Scrolls at the moment. And, and yeah, I look forward to. Uh, New story and new events to uh, to to you know come out to to excite me about playing Destiny again. I gotta admit, I did something stupid today. Uh oh, uh oh! I can't uh, wait for this. Come I roll, installed <laughs> S- Star Wars: The Old Republic. Oh no! <laughs> I, I, did I had you a get sucked in for immediately? Lightsabering. What? Did you get not, sucked in immediately? Uh, a fair amount. I uh, miss MMOs a bit. And it scratches the itch, especially for free to play. It's pretty good. I always wanted yes, to get into Daniel, it. I never did get around so to it. Um, what system is that on? PC. Oh, PC. okay. I was I was thinking I was missing out. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I definitely don't have something that will play that. My PC is. I don't know. I thought it was going to erupt into flames this afternoon <laughs> this evening right before the show and I, and I almost thought to myself man this would just be easier than trying to figure out why it is that XSplit is killing S- Skype <laughs> um, but yeah uh, that was a really cool game I didn't have enough I didn't have enough time to play that either this crap I don't have time <laughs> I just shouldn't even be doing this show <laughs> see you guys <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. Moving on. Moving on. Oh yeah, okay. let's let's go back to uh, what's going on here. All right, so they bring uh, designer Ben Womack in to describe some of the action that we're going to find in the Dreadnought. He recalls uh, Luke Smith challenging them to create an inscrutable loot-filled fortress, and says that challenge was a, an awesome piece of direction and went a long way towards inspiring their efforts. Uh, there will be more things to do. They've created a suite of new mechanics and woven them into patrol mode. Every week, every day even, it will draw you back into the fight to its depths for loot and glory. Expect to find new bounties, patrol missions, and public events, both large and small, some of which you can even investigate yourself if you can discover how. Uh, On to sticking with that topic, there will be more secrets to unlock. Uh, The Dreadnought has its secrets, and you'll need to return again and again to solve them all and acquire the rewards we created for doing so. There are hidden treasures and bosses waiting to be found, and it won't be apparent how to access them the first time you go exploring. We've laid out a lot of breadcrumb trails, though, as you fight your way through the ship. So follow the clues you're given, face the challenges you can find, and earn that sweet loot. There's uh, more challenges... Like they mentioned, the bosses and uh, uh, guarding the hidden treasures there. They they, uh, say that we play a lot of Destiny around here. As a result, we're always designing new ways to challenge players. With Oryx Behemoth Ship, you'll likely find more challenging public events than anything you've attempted before on patrol. How to succeed won't be obvious at first, but the rewards will be worth your effort. Get ready to fight bosses and encounters in surprising combinations of circumstances. And look to your fellow guardians for help. Patrol is no longer easy mode. 
we should really get a Twitch stream going before launch to show what I mean. So on that note, they, they mentioned further down that uh, they're, they will explore its depths live on Twitch sometime between now and September 15th. So we should uh, get a reveal very much like we did for the Prison of Elders and uh, the events leading up to House of Wolves. Maybe sometime around PAX would be a good idea. You know, that's two weeks ahead of the launch. Oh, I'm thinking they're going to do it halfway between PAX and launch. I, I think we're only going to get a one-week lead on this. <laughs> yeah, you think so? Yeah, because I don't think they're going to do it the same week as PAX because there's all kinds of other things going on. And, you know, people <laughs> from Bungie have, uh, you know, obligations at PAX. Yeah. So I think they're going to hold off and do the launch on its own weekend, which would make sense to do it the weekend right before between PAX and launch. Well, the only reason why PAX would be a good idea is just because that's when a bunch of prominent people are likely to be in the area. True. Yeah. I almost want to see King Gathalion back on for a reveal and give Deej all the hard questions. That makes me sweat. <laughs> Man, he ain't never going back there. What are you talking about? That was nuts. Yeah. Watching that, uh, watching that <laughs> stream was like, was it, it was really like, how do I put this? It's like if my id, if my id was there at Bungie, and it was just like, give me the information. You know, <laughs> it, it could also be, uh, what about Broman? Remember oh, the, I'm going to make this call right now. <laughs> Deej isn't going to deal with anybody. He's going to make Cosmo do it, because now he doesn't have to go out and try to battle his way live on TV. He can put Cosmo, who's like pretty good at it, <laughs> in, the, in the battle with him. <laughs> you know, very, I don't very know. True. Deej seems kind of like a badass. You know, Cosmo is, I feel, is much more approachable. Deej is kind of like, like, I don't know, like, I feel like he's just thinking about all the secrets that he knows while he's talking to you, uh, knowing that he can't tell you and he will never tell you. And I feel like what? Cosmo isn't thinking to himself, like, <laughs> well, I agree with that, but I think Deej really feels that. the pressure. What's that? <laughs> Cosmo's going to be thinking of that because now he's working there. Right? Right? I guess I guess time will tell. As all things. I don't even yeah. know why we speculate on any of this. <laughs> just, we'll just let Bungie <laughs> release shit on their own whenever they want to. <laughs> you know? Yep. I, I'd still like to see Luke Smith on a reveal so he can, you know, talk about Oryx and his hat. <laughs> I agree. There's a lot of things I want to see Luke Smith in. To be honest. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on. So next we hear hear from artist, uh, or next we see some work from artist uh, Corrine Scrivens, who's uh, responsible for one of the new strike bosses, Darkblade. He's an axe wielding hive abomination, waiting for you on board the dreadnought. Uh, he's waiting with other combat combatants that were taken from our world, twisted by the darkness, and sent to prevent you from looting their fortress. Uh, what do you guys think about Darkblade? Does he uh, look know, like the boss you want to fight? That's a good question. Jez? I can't wait until someone calls him an axe bear. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> uh, I guess so. It's it, kind of meta. First here, just like the vanilla icebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think, Crimson Warlock? You know, I, I was actually excited to see, I guess, a, a new melee weapon. Yeah, the axe was kind of exciting to see, but uh, that guy looks like, you know, he's going to be a big sponge. He's got some thick-looking armor, and I can't wait to see his mechanics. All right, so <clears throat> for those of you watching the video version of this, XSplit has just stopped uh, it's it's frozen on the screen, and I can't switch to any other sources or scenes, uh, and it's stopped showing me frames encoded <clears throat> and total megabytes, bitrate, all of this. But apparently it's still broadcasting. So yep. I've put that picture in the... Uh, sort of there. <laughs> in the chat below, uh, where the chat usually is. Uh you know, uh, just speculating on this particular enemy, it's going to be a great thing because this is a boss, right? And this is going to be 
from what we can tell, the first melee boss. As opposed to what? Every other boss that shoots at you and then stomps the ground when you get near it. Well, you don't think he's going to stomp the ground when you get near him? You know, I, no, he's going to slice you. Fight, I can see this it fight going in somewhat you. similar to the fight in the first Blades of Crota mission where you have mm-hmm. to fight the knight at the end of the mission. I I, I kind of got that feeling when I saw this boss too. Is We're, we're going to be in, in a, a room and this boss is just going to chase you down and try and melee you as fast as you can. Yeah. So I feel like it's going to be a super fun mobile fight. I'll let you in on my reasoning. Uh, this dude is melee, so he's going to try to close the gap. So that means they got to make him fast. If they make him fast, they can't make him like spam up onto you and just slam and kill everyone near you. That would be very quick wiping. You don't think that he's going to shoot something? Um, doesn't no, doesn't honestly, uh, he might Crota have a sword? <laughs> no, he does. <laughs> he does, and he shoots from his hand, like on yeah. his own anyway, all force I, blast time. I could see this guy shooting from his face. This guy looks like a face shooter. <laughs> if I see, ever saw one, money, I huh? think I think what you'll see, and this is just hopeful. I hope he throws it. Yeah, like he throws the axe at you, because that would That's be a good mechanic it. to that be would like, be as long like as it he would... has to go pick it up instead of like it disappears back. <laughs> well, <in>. see. <laughs> In my mind, he'll, like, lob it at you. And, like, first you'll see, like, indication that he's going to throw it at you so you can get out of the way. He'll lob it at you, and then he'll charge and rip it out of the ground. Type of thing. That's what I see. I can see that. What if he, like, has a blink strike? You know, he throws it, and then he blinks over to it. So you really got to run. That's that's kind of what I mean. He's going to go super fast to it. He's not going to, like, slowly saunter over. (laughs) <laughs> I see what you're saying. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be an interesting be change. Five. Well, he's hive. He doesn't need to be taken. He doesn't need to be. I mean, we, we, we've seen taking glowing hive people, though. Right. But so he doesn't need I, to be taken. But do but they gain looks- more powers from being taken? Well, in that case, then this might be a multi- uh, multi-phase fight, and like halfway through his health, he suddenly gets taken, and he's much harder. Right. That that's part of what I might have been getting at there. Like, uh, there's uh, some varieties, but I, I mean, part of the question was: Is Oryx the only like not taken individual? Is everybody underneath him going to be taken, and or can they become taken? I guess would be the next question there. Well, do, does uh, does Oryx have more than one son? Is this maybe another prince of the hive that we could be fighting here? Yeah, he's got a pretty boring name. Darkblade. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like the name that a 14 year old would think up for their online avatar. Like an optic flame sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a jab. <laughs> oh, burn. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I get it. Yeah, you know, again, this is one of those things where it's like I, I, I want to like it. I want to like it, but because I don't know very much about it and Bungie's track record of, you know, I, like I, I love what they're giving me. I love what they've given me, um, <clears throat> and I want more, and I've been ready for more, and I'm still not done with what they've given me. So it's neither here nor there. Moving on. So speaking of the art there, we uh, move on to some community art. The Destiny Year One Art Contest. Uh, art poured into the new creations page on Bungie.net. Light was given, and the winners are in. Uh, user experience lead David Sinclair did the final judging and has brought the winners to us in several categories. There are paintings, drawings, cosplay, sculpture, and uh, videos. Uh, the ones presented in the weekly update, I encourage you to check them out. They're all excellent. They uh, have all won emblems and collector's editions of the Taken King. And Blacksmith Shaders will be going out to the top 50 entries according to the light given by the community. Uh, I, I, the winners are all excellent pieces of art. And uh, there are, I, 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 would be, I would hate to have, have been user experience lead David Sinclair having to decide which ones of these won from the, the submissions on the page. I agree. 
I agree. They, <clears throat> I'm, I'm putting them up in this tiny chat window. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this first one is really cool. I didn't realize it was animated the first time I was looking at it, uh, but when I brought I it up on the site, just now. What's that? <laughs> I did not either until just now. Uh, but this is awesome. This is really great. I'm glad that they chose to honor this because it, you know, at first glance, this is not this is not uh, you know Vincent Van Gogh. This is not a uh, it's it's not a masterpiece in terms of. You know, it's it, what it's a masterpiece of is it's emoting. It gives you a certain feeling, like they've captured the feeling of this of the sun singer. They've captured this um, ward of dawn. You know, uh, and not so sure about the arc later. <laughs> <laughs> there should uh, but, be a bit more sparks. But I really, I really like it. I really like that a lot. That's a really nice one. Uh, this next one is I, I saw this one when it was when it was submitted uh, and it's it is beautiful like this one this one definitely had to uh, at least get an armor code shader. <laughs> um, well, I'm this, pretty sure all the ones on the weekly <laughs> update these people all got collectors edition. Yeah, totally, right. totally. Uh, so that one's really cool. Uh, which one is which one is your favorite, Agrios? I rather like the, the, the one that you are... I mean, they're all good. It's kind of apples and oranges to a degree. Like, I'm glad there wasn't just a winner that they did it in each category. That they, like, you know, picked a video they thought was best, picked a, a painting, a drawing, a gif, a gif, I mean, cosplay. Because uh, I, I would really be hard-pressed to pick one of these as actually favorites. I, I rather like the Warlock Finding Ghost. I, I think that expressed part of Destiny... I think that expressed the part of the answer to the contest that I liked the most out of them. Yeah, was which was what was your most memorable moment? And I, I think hunting down some of the dead ghosts and some of the the more exploratory things like that were some of my favorite time spent in Destiny, exploring the nooks and crannies, unlocking my grimoire in competition with sharks and whatnot. Uh, I, I enjoyed that, and that that painting kind of captures that whole finding a dead ghost somewhere thing for me. Uh, what about you, Warlock? What is your favorite? You know, um, originally my favorite was this this Warlock one, um, but uh, scrolling down a few, I actually really liked the Shank. I thought the the Shank. Um, I don't know what the medium is. It almost looks like putty or clay of some sort, but just the detail that went into it was amazing. So I actually like the Shank the most. What about you, Jess? Uh, despite it being a warlock, the warlock of the ghost, but for a completely different reason. It's just lamentation is the only thing I can think of. It's just so sad in a way. I mean, you're picking up a ghost from a guardian that died and the ghost is dead. <laughs> it's like <laughs> nothing is more sad than picking up those ghosts. Like if you think about the lore. Correct. I agree. That's part of what I liked about it as well. That's and he awesome. definitely brought the moment to life, so to speak. Uh, <clears throat> I think that my favorite has to be the one that I'm on right now, which is this Titan. There's so much <laughs> that's detail. I thought, I, thought, I thought for sure that's the one Remy would like. Like, this one is just, this is how I feel when I throw one out in the game. Like, it just doesn't even matter. Like, I've just stopped all incoming damage for anybody who wants to hang out in this glowing tent uh, and I don't know it's it's beautiful this is a beautifully done like it's my it's, titan's not that ripped <laughs> I think if, there, if this would have been more accurate for Remy though it, it, there should have been a, a, a little floating ghost right yeah. behind the titan in the picture with the word disgust painted above the ghost <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah <laughs> You know, in, in the same vein, in, a <laughs> in the same vein, if there's like a little ghost hiding behind the guardian, like just it would be a little bit more, well, not a little bit more powerful. It's already powerful in its own, but it would send a quite a different message if there was a ghost like hiding behind his back or something. Because it would be like he was protecting the ghost, right? Well, that and I was referring to to Remy protecting my ghost as I sit dead in a nightfall, and he put the uh -oh. bubble up and revive me. <laughs> right. I, I think I what I love most about this is it tells a story 
without like we don't know who it is that's that's attacking we don't know i I don't know i can't tell what planet this is on uh but it's it's one of those moments that's that's indescribable in that one of my one of my very very favorite things is is being drawn in by by little details and and uh warhammer 40,000 is a uh, a tabletop game that I got into many 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 years back and there was like flavor text there was this tiny story in one of the codex in one of the books specifically for the space marines and there was a story about how in this armor you're basically invincible versus a certain amount of weapons you know a certain like an, unless the weapon is a bigger weapon you just take these bullets and it's no problem. And the description was that this person was facing so much incoming fire that they had to lean at like a 45 degree angle in order to keep moving forward. Uh, and, and I, and I just saw it, I just saw it happening and I felt like I was there. Like they, they were in such a hail of bullets that they had to lean into it or else they were just going to get blown away. Like, in the water and uh and this tells that story to me this tells the story of a million bullets flying this guy's way and his ability to just just stop it uh and unfortunately that's not the way it works in the crucible it's it in the crucible it's literally a giant target you know hey you want to kill me and my friends i've put up a bubble <laughs> uh and that makes me really sad <laughs> um this is a this is completely off the rails but would you want an exotic that if you equipped it your bubble followed you you know okay so i've been thinking about this since there was a uh, there was video of a bubble following the titan and i mm-hmm. couldn't figure out how you would shoot while well, you see it's not about shooting it's about advancing i see what you're saying everybody else so it <laughs> takes you, it takes you and turns you into from some, doing some kind of DPS, it turns you into just a solid wall. And so what you're doing is you're helping other people. That would be really cool. That would be really cool. It would also let you guys shotgun. get closer. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you have a bubble up like that and it's moving with you, you're going to keep your shotgun up in case someone tries to rush in the bubble to kill you to get the bubble gone if they don't have their super. So you're just you going to be also- on a shotgun defense, you know? You could also rush in, pull the dude in your bubble, shoot him, and then back out before he starts shooting you. Yeah. I would just love to see a bubble like that just become the, like, the new steamroller. Just run over someone and they die. Was that Warlock using hard light? Um, in which one? In one the, of those pictures? The sad one, yeah. Is uh, your exploit working? Because you switched back the chat. <laughs> I What I did was I... I I just put the um, oh. I just put the um, the picture in front of the screen capture for the chat. Does that make sense? <laughs> in order to put chat up on X Split, I just have it capturing a certain amount mm-hmm. of the, my second screen. So that's what I've that's what I've done. Uh, yeah, it I doesn't look like hard light. No. It actually looks like um, it looks like a pulse rifle. Yeah, it looks yeah. like a pulse rifle. It looks like, um, man, no, I have less, a million of them. I can't think of the less name. Less reason for me to like it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. Rifles are awesome. <clears throat> yeah, right. X-Split's still, still broken. Uh, moving on? Moving on. <laughs> so uh, Lord Saladin has returned this week, and with him, uh, more new gear, including the new, uh, the new helmets, for the, the, the new Iron Banner set. He also brought back with him the chess piece as well. Uh, for sale, he has uh, Timur's Lash and Ephrodite's Spear. And uh, the Pulse Rifle scores Revenge, Radagast Fury, and uh, I forget which other one. A third one are actually all dropping in, in, the, uh, in the Iron Banner. So you can still pick those ones up. Uh, all with the new sets of rolls available. Uh, from the new weapon sets. And uh, with the return of the Iron Banner, we have also experienced uh, an uptick in lag and possible cheaters. On the subject of justice, Bungie says that we're committed to protecting destiny against cheaters. Enjoy your game. Just play it fair. 
That's all we ask. Yesterday and today, our security response team has restricted access to the crucible by the worst offenders among us all. We started with a look at the most notorious cheaters and ha that had been reported by other players. After cross-referencing against our own player data, we gave the Banham Banhammer a mighty swing. Contained in its blast radius were hundreds of people who have manipulated network traffic. If you don't know what that means, we love you. Never change. <laughs> Submit, a <report. laughs> Submit a report when and where you detect shenanigans. Shaming your offenders in a video might feel good, but it doesn't factor into our process for, paving, for passing down a guilty verdict. On the subject of bans and restrictions, Destiny player support wants you to know that no one has been or will be banned or restricted for receiving a general networking error. So they're banning the ones that they managed to catch from the crucible. Is this enough? If these are outright cheaters, is just banning them from the crucible and letting them continue to play PvE and fire teaming up with other people in PvE and using the weapons and rewards they obtained for cheating in the Crucible in PvE, is, is this still acceptable? Man, this is a great question. Well, uh, they can't affect other Guardians anymore, so... They could join their fire teams and go AFK and do other jerk things since they're already cheaters. This is true. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> if they're already network manipulating, they can join mm -hmm. other people's or have other people join their fire team and then, like, do screwy things to their network connections and boot them if they just want to, like, troll. I don't know why they would necessarily, but I'm saying these are already people without scruples. I don't want them in my fire team. I think that they've mentioned previously that people will be banned in the, uh, in the arena that they have offended against. So I think if these people continue this, um, you know, I you think... Know what that What's that? Go ahead. I was going to say, you know what that says to me, though? That says to me it's okay to cheat so you get to the lighthouse once, get all your gear, and then it doesn't matter because you'll get banned from going to the lighthouse and from playing trials, but it doesn't matter. You already got your gear that you wanted for PvE, so it was good that you cheated and, and got to the lighthouse and got your gear that once, and who cares? You're never going to play trials again anyway. You know, I, I, I hear what you're saying, uh, and I think that what they're trying to do and why the ban hazard, Banhammer hasn't come out until now or, or at least since whenever the last time it was, was I think that they're trying to be as unapproachable as possible. Like, I think that if they banned people who were cheating in Crucible from doing everything in Destiny, that would piss off a lot of people. Like, like I think that it would really, it would force the people who are cheating to, to be more pissed off than they n don't necessarily need to be. So I feel, personally, that if you're cheating in Crucible... Uh, and they ban you from that, you know, go ahead and continue to play the regular game, unless you're going AFK all the time, in which case they're going to ban you from that. But I feel like it's, I feel like they want to be so in the clear when the ban hammer hits that they are unapproachable. Like you can't, you cannot be upset by what we've done because you've done this to yourself. Uh, but I think I don't know. I feel like they should just ban them from the game because, like, what what's to say that it's just not okay to go cheat your way to the lighthouse so that you get your 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 you know pri your all the stuff you wanted from the lighthouse and get your new primaries and things from the lighthouse. Now you can go just play your PVE content and use your rewards that you got that way. And if those can off your back. You weren't ever going to play trials again. I think this almost encourages cheaters to say, "Oh, well." What, I'm just not going to be able to play Trials anymore if I cheat in Trials and get to the Lighthouse? Well, great. I'm going to cheat in Trials and get to the Lighthouse then. What do you think about this, Jez? I'm not really sure. It's it's kind of weird in a way, but they they really should be banned from all uh, the same things that you need live to play or PlayStation Plus, so all the multiplayer things. They should just ban them from that, and then they won't have to worry about them ever again. Crimson Warlock? Um, you know, I... This one, to me, seems like a... A skirt around legal terminology, because I'm guessing that the way that the Terms of Service is... Uh, is written out, that they can't flat-out ban people from the game, and that's kind of where they got themselves stuck. Um, my, that's well, my guess. That. I mean, if they, but, they cheated anywhere... Why wouldn't they be able to ban them from the game altogether? I, I think they could. 
I, I, I would say they could, but at the same time, it, how things are worded, then they have to follow those. But also, I, I think what this is, is this is this is warning number one, and don't push us to do number two. I think that's kind of what they're doing right now. But I do wish that, uh, you know, this, this language is, is pretty strong, so I wish it was a, a permanent ban, because... See, you know I, I've what? already... I've already heard reports of people like who were banned for ser- fairly serious reasons. Like people recorded them now playing again normally and still having the gear on them that they obtained through ill means. And I'm not really cool with that. Yeah, uh, I could see that. I could see that. I'm just, uh, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like, you know, Crimson Warlock, you struck upon something like it's like there's, you know, we, we we don't want to stop you from playing this game, but we want you to stop ruining other people's experience. And and if the only way we can do that is by stopping you, actually physically stopping you from from playing this experience, like I, I don't know, I feel like that might wake up somebody. <clears throat> I mean, we, we we all know that if you're if you're going to outright do this and cheat and ruin other people's experience, that that you're a piece of crap. But I don't know. Maybe it will open people's eyes. You know, maybe they will think to themselves, "Oh man, I'm being watched. Like I can't, I can't do that." You know, I I see what you're saying about not wanting to to, to them to keep their gear, uh, but it, it's just all it 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 just sounds like much more heartache, uh, much more fighting to me. You know, it's so clear. Well, you cheated in Crucible. You're done with Crucible. Banned from Crucible. Uh, See, you I'm know. just afraid that this is going to encourage people to cheat more. Now that they see the results and see that the only problem they're going to have is they, for instance, aren't going to be able to play Trials of Osiris anymore. Because that's what it appears that if you cheat in Trials, you get banned from Trials and not from Crucible altogether. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe they'll crank it up. Maybe they'll crank it up. Yeah, we'll, like, we'll probably see it more worse than not things doing things anything at all. Because when they don't say what they're doing at all, the people just don't know. They're running the risk of whatever happening to them. But yeah. now they actually have evidence that the, this is all that will happen to them. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Maybe this is one of those experiments. You know, they just wanted to see what's going to happen. Moving I'm on. I'm hoping that it is like what you said before, that this is just the first step. Like, this is just, don't mess with us, don't cross us, you know? Yep. Right, we're watching. We saw that you've done this. Don't do it again. Uh, I'm just glad to know that when I finally get to trials, there's hundreds of less cheaters out there, and then I can actually feel better about a legitimate win. Man, I hear that. Now if they'd only uh, now if they'd only take care of Thorn. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> Thorn. So uh, hopefully, yeah, like you said, hopefully they take care of Thorn. Although it doesn't seem like the changes they're going to be making with 2.0 are actually going to change how it performs in combat. I can only hope that the way the changes they're making to the rest of the weapons help compensate and even the battlefield. Uh, what happened? Was that a question? No, I, you said about taking care of Thorn, and I said I hope so uh, too, yes. although it doesn't look like that the, the new the new uh, update they're going to be doing actually changes the way Thorn performs that much. But hopefully the, the, the rest of the stuff they're changing helps level the battlefield. Agreed. Moving on. So the movie of the week section is now going to be known as the creativity section. And I will make use of the use of the new creations page from the year one art contest for the future movie of the week type submissions. Uh, Cosmo uh, brings us in this week's winner uh, for best fan recreation of the Vault of Glass experience. And this is a live action uh, slash uh, stop it, uh, what was, what was it stop uh, like claymation type animation? Really, I, I I don't know how exactly what technique was being used specifically, but is it definitely an interesting video in this the spirit of the live action commercial that Bungie created originally of uh, of a first time Vault of Glass run, and uh, I, I was quite entertained. It, it was quite well done. I it, it it made me smile for sure. That's awesome. I really wanted to watch that, and if X split hadn't crapped on me when it did. I I way would have watched it, but that's this is when I realized what was going on is because I was listening to the audio 
from my main computer on my on my laptop <laughs> and it and it wasn't working. Uh, so I'm looking forward to checking that out. That looks awesome. Looked like they did a great job. Yeah, they they really did. It, it was it definitely took so, some effort to put together. This was not not an easy thing to produce. Uh, <clears throat> in closing for this week's weekly update, they said that uh, next week they're going to be in Germany. You know, Gamescom happening there. Uh, the news feed about the Taking King is about to kick into hyperdrive. To expand the conversation about what awaits you, we'll have help from some special guests who have visited our studio. They played the game. Their story is about to break. So watch your favorite community leaders. They uh, appear to already have lots of inside info. Bife has quite heavily alluded to have the inside info, which he already has and is excited to share with us. So I'm... Uh, he has me excited to hear what he has to say. So uh, I'm sure Bife is one of the people in on this uh, this inside info. Without a doubt. Excited, so, uh, to, excited, excited to check to it out. Uh, are you expecting a new trailer? What, what do you think is going to drop at Gamescom? I mean, from the, the buzz, it really seems like we're going to get hit with a lot of major stuff. Man, a new trailer. That would be really cool. Uh, I would like a a new Vidoc. <laughs> well, how many weeks before uh, before the House of Wolves launch, launch did we see the cinematic trailer thing pop up on our director in game? It was about three or four weeks, wasn't it? That it first uh, popped up there. I don't know, Jez or Crimson Warlock. I think that was two weeks that that yeah, one I was popped up. About two. It was okay. when the when the patch came, so when we get 2.0, we'll get that director. Oh, okay. That so you don't think that's going to gonna show up for Gamescom or something like that? That's what I, I, would say. I don't think it's going to show in the game then, but I think we might see it then. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, wait, I, wait Gamescom is like next week, isn't it? Correct. Pretty... One week from today. Oh, no, I don't think we're going to see that. We'll just see more footage and more pvp footage more people hands-on i bet because that'll be a what a month and two weeks it's we're six weeks out right yeah yeah this i don't think it's gonna ramp up that quickly that quickly gotcha. wow that that, that sentence made sense in my mind just saying it just seems like there's such a buzz for what's going to be coming out of gamescom like that it's going to be so exciting that uh, i'm hoping for something big uh, i mean it's not like we're not going to have another event or, except for pax between and, and pax isn't normally like an unveily type event for this sort of stuff well, well last year they had uh it wasn't an unveiling but they did talk about like the design choices and stuff it's like Luke Smith right. did a panel at PAX. Right. But it's not so much uh, we're going to you we're know, launch trailer. a trailer type of weekend type thing. No. Well, Gamescom wasn't either last year, was it? it, it, it but Gamescom is more the place where I think a, a company would be more apt to do that sort of unveiling at. I mean, that's the nature of the Gamescom Expo is for companies to do that sort of thing. It's a vessel for that more than it is for, like, the PAX-type panels and such. And, and it just seems like... But Bife, it, part of the reason I, I'm, I'm questioning is because Bife just seems so excited about the, what he knew that was going to come out soon, like, that we're going to be blown away by it type thing. So, like, that that's part of my anticipation is his excitement. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see in a week. We'll see. We'll see in a week. <laughs> Moving that on. wraps up the weekly update and uh, the news in general for this week. Right. On, uh, one well. thing that we didn't talk about last week that we should have was uh, the new Destiny action figure. If that's Ooh. the right word, figurine perhaps. It costs one hundred ninety dollars. It is a Titan. Comes with uh, a full armor. Shadow of price. Shadow Price and Hawk Moon, uh, and that's all that really matters to me. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah, with Shadow Price, Felwinter's Lie, and Zombie Apocalypse, and depending on where you purchase it, it comes with uh, other special weapons, such as uh, you mentioned Hawk Moon, or there's the uh, Hammer of Light, or whatever it is called. Soul. Like the, the Hammer of Soul, correct? That goes with the uh, the new Titan subclass. 
And that's only available through exclusively through the Bungie site. Here's hoping that the Hunter has a scout rifle and a sniper rifle. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, if I had $190, I would so buy that. It looks, it yeah, looks it, great. It definitely looks like a figure that's worth you know, uh, a figure of that. It's, it's definitely put out a company with a little bit of reputation for, for doing good things. Right. I think that I would rather pay a bunch of money for something that was really good quality instead of a small amount of money uh, for something that was of dubious quality. Well, if it's going to be something for display especially, because, I mean, that's what it's there for is to look at. So you, you, do, you don't want something uh, of low visual quality that's going to be displayed like that. If you that's if you're buying something for a kid who's going to play with it and actually break it and use it till it's worn and you know not good anymore, th that that's when you want a more affordable thing to be replaced. But if you're a collector, then yeah, I, I agree. You, you definitely want something higher quality so that it looks good sitting there. Alrighty. Um, anything else? Nope. That's everything I got. Excellent. Uh, well, I can't believe we made it to the end. X Split is still frozen, so there won't be any uh, there won't be any outro music, which is sad. <laughs> um, Remy, you should uh, you you can acapella that for us, right? Yeah, I totally <laughs> could. Right, well, oh, jazz is already on it. That's, that was the <laughs> wrong music. Yeah, we'll all, we'll do our own rendition of the, the sign out music. Yeah, I don't know. We did that happy <laughs> birthday, and it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> but um but yeah so uh why don't we just end this while we're still on uh shout outs starting with agrios uh i want to give a shout out to bell bunny and the dames of destiny because they're awesome and uh i can't wait for them to be up for another bounty bounty uh if it's on xbox one all right but uh, hopefully it's on ps4 because uh, i want to try to get my emblem <laughs> uh, that's funny uh jez uh shout out to datto for donating almost thirty five hundred dollars to leopard stealth just for baby help and for being part of the clan it was amazing moment on stream you should watch it awesome. google it awesome awesome crimson warlock uh, my shout out this week is to all of those responsible people who raise up the hate and act like mature adults and not spoiled brat. Because you <laughs> guys are awesome. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, <clears throat> my shout out is to the ER crew that handled uh, Lucy when she broke open her head uh, because I swear I, I saw this giant this giant cut on my daughter and blood everywhere and I thought that she was never going to be okay you know in my mind is never going to be okay and the bandage came off uh, basically right after the show last week and the they glued it together and it basically looks as good as I thought it was going to be at I don't know six months down the line nine months down the line like it looks basically like it never happened this looks like we could it could just be from Halloween like we were trying to draw on a scar like it looks amazing and it's it's all better uh, and I cannot I cannot thank them enough uh, because they they just they did everything so great and I felt like I was just crying and freaking out and they were like you know why don't you go somewhere else so you don't freak out your daughter <laughs> <laughs> so uh so i did <laughs> and now she's uh now she's all better sadly she just continues to tear through the house as if there is no repercussions to anything that she does uh, and so i have a feeling that we'll be seeing those people uh more yeah. much, much more often than i'd like uh but at least uh at least i know that there's people out there who can do this she kind of thing it up later that night Right? She was tearing it up later yeah. that night. <laughs> Look at me, Daddy. I can run into this wall. Isn't that funny? No. No, no. It's hilarious because the first time <clears throat> you're, telling, you're telling me and like I'm like, oh, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, and meanwhile, yeah, I hear her screaming and crashing into things in the background, like right. having fun, like tearing it up. And you're like, no, no, you there's blood everywhere. It was just pouring down all over her face. I'm like, oh, oh, well, I'm glad she's okay. <laughs> right, right. It was insane. It was 
<clears throat> it was an amount of blood that I, if it was in a movie, I would not let either of my kids see. Like, this is, <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy, and I and I can't thank those people enough because. Uh, I don't know. They just handled it so professionally, and everything has worked out so great. Uh, so thank you to them. Uh, and that wraps up episode 50. I would like to thank everyone listening for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions or suggestions for topics to be discussed on the show, please leave them in the comments below or send them to feedback at guardian1.net, and we will see you next week. Dun, 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 dun,